Hey Istanbul, this is the Maiden's Tower. Or this one, that one, this one, not that one. It's hidden inside a Schrodinger's box or under a mold. What does it actually look like? I don't know. It changes all the time, just like the world. But do you ever find yourself in a pile of mess and want to cover it? Or clean it up? That you wish you had an AI butler to sort things out with reason? He has things he can control, and he likes a certain condition of things, and he doesn't miss details. But mushrooms and decay seem to be everywhere. Eventually, it becomes hard to tell what space is clean and what's not. So how do we have reason amongst all of this? I don't think even an AI could tell you this. Things just happen, spin around, both digital and natural. Like these dust particles, they can just disappear. Between pristine and polluted, things become immortal. We can try to find out by joining the feast at the cenotaph of last reason from this guy named Bill. Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting us here to present, <laughs> to present our new book. And we'll be doing a dramatic reading for you all. I'm Lechem. And I'm Iti. Welcome to the famous, to the fabulous fungal fermenting yeah. foundation. I contaminate, grow, expand, and entangle. Polyphonic dreams. Mushroom. So before we start, um, I would like to talk a little bit about how this project came about. So uh, as we, and this is written in our author's note, as we walked by the display window of a little red book kiosk one day, a reflective silver cover of a little book caught our attention. This was how we decided that um, we, we discovered that the pristine pills of polluted fantasies, written by authors, which now are our group friends yeah. and also collaborators, Wendy Lin and Michael Hoi Ming Du, and this not knowing guy called Alice, or girl. We chose to use this contemporary soliloquy as a philosophical basis of our project since we're interested in the way that it challenges the very foundation of cleanliness, a fundamentally human ideal. After unpacking prominent themes of the text, such as capitalism, globalization, entanglement, and decay, we distilled our thoughts and reflections into this fabulous fungal fermenting foundation. It precipitates fantastic transformations through eight fermentation chambers, each containing its own temperament, questions, and ideas about the world. As a result, FFFF is the architectural and theatrical crystallization of this fungal fantasy that questions reason, invites discussion, and catalyzes transformation. So what do we actually ferment? The answer, everything. And now I'd like to just share this product with you all as well. It is food. It is definitely food. <laughs> Fermented. <laughs> Trust us. Very much so. While we are sharing the food, um, oh, I think I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to direct. I would like to direct an attention to page sixteen of this wonderful book that we found, and it was a very important philosophical basis of our project. It's called Yana's Final Last, definitely final revised. Hello, world. Please talk to me. Can something be completely clean or are we always constantly moving towards the state because something can always be cleaner? Will we ever stop cleaning? Life is well enough furnished, but we are too greedy with regard to its furnishings. Something always seems to us lacking and will always seem lacking. It is, of course, how you perceive cleanliness. Do you see cleanliness as your mind's order or an objective state of nothingness? Please talk to me. My mind is filled with filth. My life is filled with filth. How can I still have reason amongst all this filth? What isn't dirty? What isn't filth? What is yours? That is the foundation of property. That one's own, propre, dance smells good. One's own is what is clean, i.e. propre. And property is only cleanliness, property. With all good reasons, this thing that is horrible for me is yours insofar as you are alone and not finding it repugnant. When you realize that 57% of you is not human cells, it is nice to reconsider what exactly is filth, what is you. You can live with what is around you. 
I hope I am reasonable. You're totally not being reasonable. <laughs> So out of the eight from uh, out of the eight chambers, this is chamber one, the organic all wall icy stair landing with a magical door, IQF individually quick frozen. And on page four, Wendy and Lin wrote this very interesting passage. The garden behind me is a sort of banalized terrain. When guests enter, they're required by Janus to be cleansed of dirt. Washing is a social act, purifying one's space in the act of welcoming. The more the body is dirty, the more the niche, niche is soiled with feces, the more the person is attached to his property. The host is clean, the parasite is dirty. I mean that is only clean for itself. The for itself stinks. You can eat, sleep, make love, and so on in the Diorarized Hotel, but you won't sleep or wink or eat a morsel in dirty surroundings, for those surroundings belong to one person. In the next paragraph, I want time to leave me alone because I too was not an evader of decay. I was once a thousand year old magic brick door embellished by the treadles of fungi with a flare of Art Nouveau. But the bricks crumble, the girders sack sickly, lines disintegrate before I realize they're there. So the second hole is the crimson hole of iron and kombucha brewed in perfumes and aromas. Starting with face impressions, it is a room with Mudeja style stucco work marbles from Alexandria, mosaics of Numidian stone, staircases all of wood, heavy black velvet curtains that transmitted no light rays, a timber ceiling in which a carved dolphin swims, Escher like patterns tattooed on the floor, peacock colored bonds. A bush stone wrought with fruit vines, a turkey carpet, stuffed couches, and armchairs, flames of seven branched candelabra reflecting light upon the walnut wood table, vials of ivory and colored glass, and guests drowning in strange synthetic perfumes. A man and a woman, knife and fork, pepper and salt. Even the couches on which the guests reclined at dinner could be carried from one room to another if necessary. Thirsty, one coke. Do you want pineapple, papaya, guava, peach, coconut, apple, orange, strawberry, grapefruit, pink grapefruit, cherry, apple, apple, strawberry, or grape juice? Do you want virgin milk, vegetable liqueur, or mushroom saliva? We only have iodine and kombucha here. There are meats stuffed with sweet, smelly ingredients, emitting a delicious mist, which is slow to evaporate. Sardines and rice combined with curry served on disposable, recyclable banana leaves, moldy eggplants, slivers of white cheese on the side, large platter of broiled fish and small roasted potatoes dressing on cool green lettuce leaves, psilocybin tablets for a destabilized mind, a rabbit fillet Bill's been saving for no reason, fried mushrooms and onions, a decadent coffee cake made of grape nuts, and a couple of shots of fermented thimbleberry. A feast. Here is a paragraph that I really liked um, about toilets as well. How can one be at home everywhere in the world, be friends with everyone, influence each person regardless of their individual peculiarities? A generous man can't, Bill Murray can't. It's simple, open doors, feast, wishing thoughts one thinks perhaps elusively the illusion of having escaped reality. Tell stories, stories entangle, weaving together fact and fiction, transforming lighthouses into palaces with the aid of gauze. Indeed, the worldwide westernization of the toilet looks increasingly untenable given its reliance on plentiful water and expensive infrastructure. It lacks reason. Defecating in clean water using paper is essentially harm alarming since all three aspects are fundamentally dubious. Logic suggests reversing the process. Water is better for cleansing the body and wasteful to sully by excreting into it. Hence, it would be a joke to maintain the mushroom garden, for if one thinks hard enough, sitting is anatomically incorrect, but squatting is. Shitting in clean water is wasteful, and there are plenty of alternative grey water or dry toilets. I, as a toilet, receive feces every day. Every fluid can be a fertiliser, and every structure fertile. In this last cleaning, water goes into ponds or indoor pools where microalgae are grown to absorb nitrogen and phosphorus. On chamber three is the sizzling hot copper food laboratory, which is signified by anaerobic and um, dry heat and is sterilized. 
There, when there are micro roads, an ever expanding inventory of things that one can ingest. Those with an expiry date. Consumables, capitalist favor. Digestibles, parasites. Those that can be eaten only once, those that can be boxed. Gelatinous ones, those that, when frozen, can no longer revert to its original state. Those that colonize. Rocks, magical ones. Cosmic latte, those that eat you. And the fourth hall is the milky janitor's chamber. If you like milk or moldy tofu, then you will like this room. The condition is curdled. <laughs> Why? In my short thousand years of existence, I realize objectively, we have to continue living with cancers, with germs, with fungus, with decay. It's better to find a symbiotic equilibrium, even fairly primitive than to open a war that is always lost because one and the enemy find renewed force in the relationship. Decomposing is their own ideal of cleansing. And if so, why not culture them in curdled milk, which sometimes results in delicious cheeses? Here, Michael wrote about uh, milk in this very specific, um, his description here. Milk is what differentiates a splendid iron from the ordinary. Milk can be used to produce a wide range of dairy products, which include butter, ghee, cheese, curds, whey, casein, and yogurt. The ideal yogurt is half cheese. And then they wrote some codes for their cleaning purposes that I don't really understand, but I would like to read this recursive one, or a supposedly recursive one, called Janus 4.7. How can one cleanse infected members of all traces of pollution? Define main. Deep clean, guest. Deep clean, house. Deep clean, island, return. And the recursive cleaning part is apparently defined here. If thing is atom, clean thing, return thing. Else, for part in thing, return deep clean of part. And there was a mention of a heavily salted capitalist waterfall beach. The condition, curl in phosphorus air and with Himalayan salt. Yum. There they wrote, The agitated ocean runs up the rock face, leaps with the aid of the full moon, and splashes me in the face. I move out of its reach. What charming ignorance. I laugh at the petty attempts of the ocean. Meanwhile, the waves of ignorance gradually eat away the ground that I stand on. And there is also this passage about walls. While homeowners typically try to keep up cheap fungus out of their walls, a new form of insulation material is mushroom-based. New York company Evocative proposed organic insulation growth on mycelium, the thread-like roots of mushrooms. What is interesting is Lin and Du actually wrote um, very much about the connections between their book, although it's completely chaos. They say, never again clean other people's shits. Never again allow your children to live in shame and fear. The entire population of toilet cleaners in India is Dalits. These people are previously labeled with ultimate pejorative untouchables. What false message? I love being a Dalit. For in the damp and moist places of Suez is the place where I harvest my most delicate mushrooms. Tartrufo, truffle in Italian. Tubercle. Underground mushroom is a parasite. He detours and captures, they say. But when it comes to eating, however, the delicious comes out from the, those which are captured from filth, such as crabs, lobsters, fungus, or the toilet. Bill designed the cenotaph and the whole toilet to spring up around my core. Columns support an outward cornice that forms a gutter into which the wastewater falls from the roof. Any excess overflows into a second gutter outside the first, where, however, it cannot remain, but passes away by means of a ring of small holes between the base of the outer cylinder. Through holes, the suns enter the sewer no less than the palace, yet takes no pollution. Now we come to the sixth chamber, the enchanted ego forest of magical realism, lacto-fermented. Here we find a diary passage. 10th of December, 2005, Saturday. Dear diary, I must state that upon accounting, I discovered the range of uses for cleaning products is wide and their specificity is remarkable. In the janitor's chamber, one finds a multitude of tools that they've got to use that go beyond their master's intentions. If you let your thoughts wander far enough, the master's tools can dismantle the master's house or even the master him or herself. The tools revolt, 
Washing machines snatch cloths, clothes from the guests. Bellowing hoovers suck off makeup and wigs and false teeth. Electric toothbrushes leap into screaming mouths. Clothes dryers turn gardens into dust bowls. Garden tools whiz through lawn parties, impaling the guests who are hacked from fertilizers by industrious Japanese hatchets. Bill. The Mushroom Ego and Yanis Lawnmower, a dialogue. The afternoon wind wafts across the Bosphorus, enveloping the island in a gen general air of mild decay. I rub my somewhat bulbous nose and fear how badly the flavor of decay was developing in Istanbul. Here, mushrooms grow off stones, lichens cover every imaginable piece of rock or bark, mosses grow in dark crannies, trees keep mutating into the rhizomes. I keep trimming them into tree shapes. I move to the next tree before the fungal hyphae get a chance to digest my rubber tires. My psyllium keeps trying to entangle stories. No, absolute rationality must be maintained. To put things together of the sign and its likeness, this is why nature and the word can intertwine with one another to infinity, forming, for those who can read it, one vast single entity. I must not let the palace decay. Changelessness is decay, counsels the mushroom perching on the tree trunk, all intertwined. Paradox, there is no decay without the change for the, for the worse. Changelessness is a change for the worse. But this island is to remain the most perfect Baroque garden. I cried indignantly. It seems a lighthouse to you, but it is just a mirage, an ideal, a flashing bright green light that is as close as a star to the moon. Stop talking metaphors and mirages. You're just a mushroom. And you're just Phil's lawnmower. <laughs> and now, for ingredients, consult an ever-expanding inventory of things that one can ingest. But in the case of having a good tasting menu, everything depends on everything else. There's a kind of vole that needs old forest that eats mushrooms that grow on rotting logs and excretes spores somewhere else. No rotting logs, no mushrooms, no mushrooms, no vole, no vole, no spreading fungus, no spreading fungus, no new trees, everything. It re represents a vast circulation. Plants grow and are eaten by animals. Animals eat and are eaten. Any organism that dies incorporated into the cells of molds, decaying, um, decay bacteria, and so on. Extracting taste from everything and everything else is a type of controlled decay. And here are some recipes, including thunder mushroom, aged bosphorus, sardine, and silk road kombucha that feel free to browse later. In the mushroom garden, one does not clean nor pay rent. Dalit, the sewer. In the seventh chamber, is the diamond-clad harlequin intoxicating impluvium, which is, which is referred to ethanol fermentation. A rude interruption. A blow of the wind, the door of the palace swings open, lightning and thunder, the mushroom appears. Why is the mushroom? What does she want here? Shh. Well, quite a glittering assemblage, Monsieur Marie, Pantalone, Flavio, Il Capitano. And how quaint, even the harlequin. I really felt quite distressed of not receiving an invitation to the feast. You weren't wanted. Not what? Oh dear, what an awkward situation. I had hoped it was merely due to some oversight. Indeed, it was a terrible oversight. I offer my greatest apology to you, dear guests. The mushroom speaks. Thank you. I'm old. Older than thought in your species, which is itself 50 times older than your history. The world keeps changing and I change with it. If you have seen Mother Earth's harlequin costume, you have known antiquity. It is gradually disappearing, becoming a white virginal coat again. Open fields where monotonous corn disturbingly occupies the space as far as the horizon, ugly and greenish. In fact, maintaining order and self-contained singularity is like trying to disrobe a harlequin who will never arrive at his last costume. He undresses infinitely. There are always more peacock marks, ocelli, and tattoos. The state of things become tangled, mingled like thread, a long cable, a sky. Entanglement further creates Baroque evolutionary possibility of symbiosis. For example, from my long-winded affair with algae, emerged the lichen. It is something that is neither me nor algae, but both of us simultaneously. If you question its reason, its layers of harlequin costume peel under the blazing sun to reveal more pleats and wrinkles. Pale, hairless, raw. While well, the mushroom spoke, the spores waited patiently till the northwest wind blew and blowing, and there was some southwest, southwest wind, which generally lifted them up and flew with them towards new destinations. Well, now that I've filled your paws with spores, I'd best be on my way. Oh no, the spores are getting everywhere. <laughs> Seize that creature. Stand back, you fools. The loose, 
Silence surrounds the cenotaph, music murmuring shades of color and scents. The lone holly can dances before the guests in an endlessly rising loop under the Istanbul sun. Room number eight, electrical blue panorama observatory. This one is digitally fermented. Here I welcome guests from all over, his acquaintances, mistresses, dear friends, dear foes. Open in times of war, closed in times of peace. I always believe true treasures hide, hide behind me, not Alibaba's gold, but a place to talk. An open court with a colonnade on each side, an artificial open air garden realized through the most advanced technological means. The ceiling is decorated to represent a blue sky in which electrical lights twinkle, while by an ingenious arrangement of optical apparatus, the effects of clouds sweeping over the sky is produced. Open sesame, here, here, dare I ask, are you a host or a parasite? You see, the house is the winning throw of the dice which man has wrestled from the uncanniness of the universe. It is my defense against the chaos that threatens to invade him. The more overwhelming Istanbul is, the tidier this has to get. The higher the chambers go, the tidier they have to get. Indeed, it was the highest chamber. And I would like to conclude by a very nice paragraph that Wendy and Michael wrote, which stated, George liked eating mushrooms in his room. Don't do it, said his father. George went on eating war. His father went to the drugstore and bought a bottle of war pills. George ate them all and his head grew into a lighthouse. George was happy playing with the lighthouse, but the father was sad because everybody said, what a strange child you have, sir. 